Right, hi everyone. So, another video um, following on from the chain rule. And this is about the product rule and the quotient rules. Okay, so let's just recap on the chain rule and make sure just really quick, quick snap examples. Okay, so 2x to the 4 plus 1 to the power of 3. Remember, the chain rule is saying differentiate uh, a function within a function. So we're going for the fast method, right? We don't need t's anymore, but we could do it with t's, right? So if we said let t be 2x to the 4 plus 1, remember we would differentiate our t. So dt by dx is 8x cubed, uh, and we would let y then equal t cubed, because t was 2x to the 4 plus 1. Differentiate y with respect to t, you get your free a. 3t squared and remember the chain rule by the way if the resolution comes out crap on this you just need to change it on your youtube browser just put high quality yeah so chain rule uh, as in if my writing's like fuzzy so dy by dx then is dy by dt dt by dx and dy by dx then if we put those ingredients in so 8x cubed and 3t squared, but yeah, you know it, you know it, we didn't start with t's, so we're not going to finish with t's, right? So 2x to the 4 uh, plus 1. Simplify that up, so that's 24x cubed, 2x to the 4 plus 1 squared. But remember, we want to do the quick way, that's the slow way. This is slow, we want fast. So dy by dx is, just notice then, Notice what happens. In a way, I treat this, remember that fg of x stuff? I'm treating this like x cubed. Right? x cubed differentiates to 3x, which is 2x to the 4 plus 1 squared. Yeah? So whatever that is, that function within a function, that just stays in there. And then notice that we times it by the derivative of the inside. So 8x cubed. Can you see how quick that is? How nice that is? And we end up with 24x cubed, 2x to the 4 plus 1 squared. Okay, you're so much less likely to make mistakes if you work outside and in, and instead of using your kind of t's and all that kind of stuff, right? Now, the product and quotient rules, what are they? What are they for? Or what is it? So, they'll start with the product rule. So, the product rule and all this stuff, by the way, assumes that you are familiar now with the chain rule. It's just like a prerequisite. It's done. So if you're struggling with the chain rule, watch the video again, work through it, uh, or come and see someone and get help. Okay. So the product rule, this says that if you have two functions of x timesing each other, so u of x times v of x, but often we just write it as u times v. Okay. So uv, so that means you've got a product you've got two functions times each other. So the rule says, and we can prove this in class using first principles. Again, I have videos on that uh, if you're interested. dy by dx is going to be, you differentiate the first thing, times it by the original v, plus times it by the original u, differential of the second thing. So basically, remember, first thing stays, times differential of the second thing. The second thing stays times the differential of the first thing. All right? Let's see that in action. So, remember, I'm going to write it down then. So, if y equals uv, you must know this, right? dy by dx is uv dash, so that means derivative of v plus vu dash. If you've got that, this is no problemo. So, let's go for it. dy by dx equals and if you've got dy by dx equals, what's u and what's v? Well, u is this first function here, remember? So you're spotting your functions. And this is where lots of people go wrong because they can't spot the functions. You can't spot the product. Well, this is one function u times by this function v. So following our formula, there's our u, x squared, all times by the derivative of this v. Now, we know how to do this. This is the chain rule now, isn't it? To me, this, this is the function within the function. To me, that reads x to the power of 10. x to the power of 10 goes 10x to the power of 9. 
times by the derivative of the inside, so 3x squared plus 3, right? Now the product rule says plus, and now we do what we did before. So v stays the same, so x cubed plus 3x to the 10, and now we times it by the derivative of u, so that's 2x. So you can tidy this up a little bit. So you've got 10x squared times 3x squared plus 3, x cubed plus 3x to the 9. That's the first bit, plus 2x, lots of x cubed plus 3x to the 10. And that's the second bit. So that's your dy by dx. It looks complex, but it's really not. It's really quite OK. So again, is this a product? Yes, because we've got two functions times each other, right? By the way, sine 3x squared is not a product, okay? Sine, remember, says, sine says, give me an angle, and I'll tell you the proportion of the y-coordinate over the radius. You know, people like to say opposite over hypotenuse, but we know better from our trig theory, yeah? So sine 3x squared is not the u and v. Sine without anything next to it makes no sense whatsoever. Right, it's always sine of an angle, and the angle here is 3x squared. Right, so we write out our dy by dx again if it's a product rule. So remember, first thing stays plus u dash, v dash, and then second thing stays and u dash. Yeah, so dy by dx here, then the x uh, cubed stays, and now we've got sine 3x squared again, chain rule. That, to me, reads like sine x outside in, remember? So sine x goes to cos x, and then we need to times it by the derivative of our x. Plus, remember the product rule? I should have two lots of things here. So u dash v. So the v can stay sine 3x squared. Don't touch that. And the u dash is 3x squared. Tidy it up a bit. So 6x times that, so that's 6x to the 4 cos 3x squared plus 3x squared sine 3x squared. Okay? So dy by dx. Box that. Okay, nice. Last one. So again, where's the function? Remember, sine times x doesn't exist. It's always sine angle and cos angle. So sine angle is your u. Cos angle is your v. Quickly write down uv dash plus v u dash, right? So dy by dx equals u stays the same, so sine x stays the same. Cos 4x cubed, to me, you know it, you know it. Cos of angle, so cos x goes to, because it begins with co, minus sine x. And now you're going to times it by the derivative of the x, so 12x squared, plus, remember the plus, v stays the same, so cos 4x cubed, right, times by the derivative of sine x, which we know is cos x. So let's clean that up, so we get minus 12 sine x, we get minus 12x squared sine x sine 4x cubed, plus cos x times by cos 4x cubed, right? dy by dx, box that puppy. Okay, that's the product rule. The quotient rule, what does quotient mean? Well, it means divide. So this time, if you have y equals u over v, so one function divided by another, this one's a little bit harder to remember, but we have to remember it. Now, the way to remember it is v squared v, right? So v squared on the bottom, v straight away in that left-hand corner. So I'm going to say this all the time. v squared v, v squared v, u dash, minus, so the product was plus, quotient is minus, minus, and now just the opposite way around. So u v dash, okay? Biggest thing to remember, v dash v, okay? And again, these can all be proved using first principles, and we can do this in class. But for the moment, you just got to get familiar with the chain rule, get familiar with these rules, and remember them. So let's try it again. 
with some examples. So it's saying if y is x squared over sine x, we know that if y is u over v, dy by dx is, you said it, v squared v, u dash, minus uv dash. Okay, so let's try it then. So dy by dx equals, well, we know that u is x squared, right? And what's v? v is sine x. So straight away, I always start with the bottom, sine x squared. And then whack your sine x there. So there's your v dash v. And now u dash, x squared is u, so that's 2x. Subtract, and now u v dash. So u was x squared, that just stays. And v was sine x, so that's going to become cos x, right? Nice. Box that puppy, as you know. Right, let's try that again. Is it a quotient rule? Absolutely, because you've got a fraction. What's our quotient rule? dy by dx equals v squared v, u dash take away u v dash. So off we go. We know what u and v are now, so this must be u, this must be v. So dy by dx must equal v squared, so 3x, ugh, 3x plus 1 to the 10. All squared is 3x plus 1 to the 20. And now we write our 3x plus 1 to the 10. There's our v. u dash, 12x squared, minus. And now the u stays, so 4x cubed. And now, hopefully, you're screaming out into your headsets. We've got the chain rule, haven't we? So v dash, this to me reads x to the 10. So 10 x to the 9. Now times it by the derivative of your x, so 3. So clean this up, get 12x squared, 3x plus 1 to the 10. Subtract 30 times 4, so 120x cubed, 3x plus 1 to the 9, all over 3x plus 1 to the 20, which you could simplify even further, couldn't you, by taking out a factor or dividing that 3x plus 1 to the power of 9. Right, let's do this again. So y equals 4x cubed plus x to the 5, all over cos x. We know what's u, and we know what's v. You guessed it, we'll write that formula down again. You really need to know this formula. So v squared v, u dash minus u v dash. If you get the formula wrong, you get no marks in your exam. So it's really important that you get this right. Okay, no method marks, which means no accuracy marks. So dy by dx equals v dash at a v squared v, sorry, and v is cos, so cos squared x cos. Now u dash again. Hopefully you're screaming out. This is the chain rule again, isn't it? It's a function within a function. So I see this as x to the five. So x to the five goes five x to the 4 times by the derivative of the inside, 12x squared plus 1, minus, and now u v dash. So u stays the same, 4x cubed plus x to the 5, and v dash, cos x goes to, it begins with co, so minus sine x. Clean this up a little bit, so you get 5, 12x squared plus 1, cos x, 4x cubed plus x to the 4, subtract, well now you've got minus and minus, so that's plus sine x, 4x cubed plus x to the 5, all over cos squared x, and box that. And there we go, folks. There we go. Can you see that what looks really complicated is just really following all the stuff that you know before, it's just amalgamating together. I'm pretty sure that's the last example it is. It's the chain rule, really, and the formulas that you need to get your grip on. Okay, watch the chain rule again. Watch the video again. This will set up the rest of your A-level in maths. It's very important that you understand how to do this. Get help. Follow the examples. Practice, practice, practice. Okay, 
see you later.